Welcome. This is Ignite Kingdom Talk. Make the marketplace the miracle place. This episode of Ignite Kingdom Talk is sponsored by GoToSMBO.com. See my benefits online. A Keeler and Associates company. Make sure you check the description of this episode to learn more. Hi guys, I'm Craig and this is my beautiful wife, Desiree. Guys, welcome to Ignite Kingdom Talks. We are so excited. It's like, what are we doing here? Oh my gosh. I know. We are, we're doing it. We're so, doing but it. guys, here's, here's what's on our hearts. This is what, this is what God downloaded on us back in, this would have been back in, during the, during COVID, during the shutdowns. And as, as believers in Christ, as business owners, Really, it was it, to me. It was a wake up call, a wake up call like none other. And and I really thought that looking at the situation that we were in and how everyone was shut down, I remember making those phone calls to friends, to other mm-hmm. like minded believers. And it was either it was either like some of those some of those people were so energized, they were going to make it through, they were going to keep going. They kept the faith. And then there was others that were so down that were just on the ground. And I I thought, man, as a former Marine, I just felt it was my job to help pick up, restore, put them back on their feet. And as believers, so many times we just, I don't know why we do that, but we just walk over the wounded. And I'm just, I'm tired of that. And I looked at where I was at as a believer, as a business owner. And so many times I left, I left Christ at the door of the business. I didn't want to bring them in. I didn't want to offend anybody. I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings. But yet at the same time, I almost felt like this, looking back, I almost felt like a hypocrite. And I was like, what am I doing? And I picked up the word of God. I picked up the word of God one day and I just thought, I'm either going to believe this from beginning to end or I'm, or I'm just done. I'm not going to believe it at all. And obviously, I took the step in the, in the, in the right direction because I, I, I know what he did for me. I know what he did for our marriage, mm-hmm. how he restored our marriage, yeah. and how he put it back on, on a solid rock. And I know if he can do that for us, mm-hmm. and that was a mess. I made a mess of our marriage. And if he can restore a marriage like that, I think he can restore so many people. So many people are hurting so we put this together, Ignite Christian Business. And really, I thought at there for a while, it was just going to be a one and done. It was going to be a conference. It was going to be a conference that we did. And there was probably a little, little less than 100 people that showed up for the first time. And, but there was so much momentum. There was so much energy that came from that. As, as believers, they want to know more. They want to, they want to step up their own business. They want to, they want to go out and... and, and and, and, and help make a difference. And I thought, going back to my Marine Corps days, how can I make a difference? How can we make a difference even in our nation? And I thought, if we can step up, it's all about leadership, isn't it? Yeah. And if we can step up and we can help ignite good leaders and make them great leaders, because it's all about leadership. And I, and I, and I thought, looking back, I looked at that whole situation. I thought, if we can change our community we can change our city. If we can change a city, then we can change a nation. It comes back to we the people. And I think the best leaders that are out there today just happen to be Christian business owners, the kingdom-minded people, kingdom mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. And, and guys, I want to I read, read you this. This is, this is from uh, Miles Monroe. And, and he would say this at, at a lot of his conferences, a lot of his get-togethers. But, but listen, listen, listen to this. Monroe often started his lectures or his conferences by stating that the richest and wealthiest places in the world are not the gold mines of South Africa, nor the diamond mines of Johannesburg, nor the oil fields of the Middle East. According to Monroe, according to Monroe, the wealthiest places in the world are in the cemeteries. Listen to this. His reasoning for this was in the cemeteries, you will find buried countless multi-million, quite possibly multi-billion dollar inventions, businesses that were never started, 
best-selling books that were never written, masterpiece paintings that were never painted, number one hit songs mm -hmm. that were never recorded, and dreams that were never lived. Instead, they all died and went to the grave merely as unrealized potential. Listen to this. Something capable of being, but never becoming. Wow, oh, that's good. Every time I read that, it's just, it's just like, oh my gosh, wow. Mm -hmm. And we talk about making a difference. We're talking about thinking outside the box, thinking kingdom. And, and Des, you and I have been going through this for a while now. Mm -hmm. And why are we just now starting to get kingdom? Why, what took us so long to understand the whole kingdom, the whole kingdom principle? I think for me, years ago, the Lord kept putting on my heart, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto you. Mm. And I kept thinking, okay, Lord, what is your kingdom? What is your righteousness? Because it's not just about seeking the kingdom or seeking his righteousness. It's seeking kingdom and righteousness. And it's only his kingdom because there is a kingdom of darkness, little cake. And there is the kingdom of heaven and the gospel of Jesus. And so... I just began to just kind of dig into that, and I'm like, Lord, I don't know what that even all means, but you know, just give me the revelation of what you want, what you're saying to me, not having any clue yeah. what He was going to use it, even as a platform to speak to others. And so, I just wanted to share this scripture. It kind of blew me away that um, in Matthew six thirty three, that's where you find the seek first the kingdom of God mm -hmm. and His righteousness, but um, it says, you're, it's called acts of righteousness, basically, and it's in Matthew 6, and it says, be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men to be seen by them. If, you'll do, if you do, you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by man. I tell you the truth, they have received the reward in full. But when you give to the needy, and it doesn't say if you give to the needy, I just it, it would have highlighted when you give yeah. to the needy. So it's not an option. Do we give to the needy? You know, are to we are we to be givers? The Lord says when you give. So we don't have an option in that. And he says, But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your so that your giving may be in secret. Then, and I love the word then, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And yeah. I just thought, oh, yeah. God, you know, how many times do we want to brag and say, oh, look at how much we gave or look at this or look at that and draw attention to us and mm -hmm. what we've mm -hmm. done. And it's just like, Lord, let it be done in secret so that our reward is in heaven and that it pleases his heart when we're not trying to take the credit yeah. for it. Yeah. And then this is probably my favorite part of it. It says, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. So it doesn't say again. It doesn't say if you pray. It's when you pray. And I know a lot of people say, well, I'm not an intercessor. I'm not called to pray. We're all called to pray. And we're all called to intercede. And so the Lord, when he says, when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the streets to be seen by men. I tell you the truth. They have received their reward in full. And I thought it's so interesting how the Lord, when we do it for man and not for God, and we want the applause of man and not the reward from heaven, which is by pleasing yeah, the Father yeah. only. It does, you know, other people, of course, are going to glean from that. But it says, but when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep babbling like pagans, for, for they, they think that they will be heard because of their many words. And I thought about that just not too long ago. I was thinking, you know, when you're having just an intimate time with a close friend, with a spouse, whatever it may be, and, and just talking the depths of your heart, like just, Lord, you know, to your husband, to whomever, it would be as if somebody, you know, was sitting in the room with you listening. And that's why I believe the Lord says, go into the room, close the door so that it's just you and him. That because nobody, place. the secret place, yeah. nobody wants somebody else listening in on your conversations with your loved one that you're just having heart-to-heart -heart talks with. And that's what the Lord wants. He wants intimate times with us 
where he is talking to us, we're talking to him. And I think that's the secret, going into the secret place, dwelling in the secret place. And then the last one is, here it says, when you fast, do not look so sober as the hypocrites. They disfigure their faces to show men they are fasting. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. And that the, fa the Father will reward you again. It's not broadcasting, hey, I'm fasting, everybody, you know, hoping God's going to move. It's, Lord, this is between me and you, and you're calling me to a fast. Obviously, there's corporate fasts where everybody knows that they're all fasting. But this is not corporate. This is an intimate fast that we're talking about here. And the prayer is also listed, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, and your kingdom come, your will be done. So when we pray, we are asking the Father to bring the kingdom of heaven down to this earth in every aspect of our lives, in our family, in our business, in our relationships with others. And as it is in heaven, give us this day our daily bread. Lord, provide for us what we yeah, need every yeah. day. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. And I just, those th three things right there, if we really hone in on those and do it for, for the glory of God to him, that we will see an impact in our lives. In um, the other day when I was pra just praying, I felt the Lord, you know, sometimes when you wake up in the morning, you're so tired and it's like, oh Lord, I have to get out of bed. And yet he loves, he's like, uh, meditate on my word day and night, you know, just to go and have that time with him in the morning and at night. But it, the Lord brought to my mind while I was laying in bed and I love to pray. I just love to get up and be with him. Mm -hmm. But it was a morning I was really tired, and I just felt like, oh, to, to sleep a few more mo moments. And I heard the Lord just whisper to me, you know, when he was in, in, before he died on the cross, he went to pray and he said to his disciples, will you not, or will you pray? And so they are off, you know, ready to pray, and they're tired, and they fell asleep. And the Lord comes back and says, you know, could you not stay awake? And again, he goes and comes back and they're asleep again. And I just feel right now, just as the Lord, it was such a dark time because he was, he was going to the cross and he was going to be crucified. And we know what happened after that. The resurrection power came. Yeah, yeah. And the Lord just showed up and miracles began to happen. The Acts, the book of Acts took place and you know, multiples of people were converted and saved. I really feel that's the time we're coming into. But before that happens, I believe there is such thick darkness over the earth and that the Lord is arising and His light is shining and pushing back. But He is saying to His people, will you tarry mm. one hour for me in prayer? And to get up, and not in a religious, oh, I have to spend time yeah, with the Lord. Yeah. But oh my gosh, I get to spend time with the King of Kings, my Father, you know, my advocate, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit is is there with me. So anyways, I just thought that was kind of cool. Wow, so good. That, that mm -hmm. is so good. So where do we, how do you think that we miss the mark so many times? Don't, don't you think that a lot of it can be just a mindset? That sometimes we just don't, I don't know, I, 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 just, I just have this, this understanding the kingdom and understanding who we are, but to understand who we are, we have, to, we have to have a better understanding of who He is. And then once we understand who, we, who He is, then we can understand who He says we are. And, and it's like, it's like what, where's that verse at where it talks about changing your mindsets? And I think that has so much to do with kingdom mm -hmm. and understanding and, and, and that relationship like what you're talking about. And I think that's what we're going to we're going to be talking about a lot at this at this upcoming conference. And guys, if you're not, if you haven't seen anything on this, look at June 29th and 30th. The Kingdom uh, Kingdom Entrepreneurs, Business Owners. If you are Kingdom minded, this is something you guys need to take a look at. As a matter of fact, guys, take a look at this video. I, th I think I think you'll love this.
So guys, go to ignite-cb.com and, 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 and register. And, and do I think I, we believe this is we believe this is gonna this is gonna sell out. Yeah. This will be a, 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 a such such a, a great event. We got so many great speakers that that are gonna be there. You're gonna be blessed. You're gonna you're gonna come out of this. I believe you're gonna come out yeah. of this changed. And and Des, you've said it so many times. How, how does it you say that make the make the marketplace the miracle play? What do you mean by that? Well, I believe so many times we are just stuck in our in our cubicles we're stuck in our offices and the lord is saying make the marketplace the miracle place and mm. you look at all of so many scriptures in the bible the miraculous took place in the in the marketplace and it wasn't as much in the synagogues and in the churches the temples it was in the marketplace and i believe that the lord is saying you know trust me in this take yeah. steps of faith pray for your co-workers pray for those on the street pray for those in the grocery store and I just have to tell a quick little testimony. Our son-in-law last night, they stopped to get gas, and um, there was a guy on the, just a homeless guy there, and um, our daughter and their little baby, they were sitting in the back seat. And it was a little sketchy and um, feeling a little bit uncomfortable. In fact, my daughter, she reaches over and locks the door. She felt so uncomfortable. And and here, Jimmy, our, our son-in-law, he just says, hey, are you good? And the guy's like, like taken back by him. Like, mm -hmm. why would somebody, you know? And he says, I'm homeless. And, and uh, he, he just, Jimmy just knew he felt very alone at that moment. And so he just began to just to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with him. And the guy gave his heart to the Lord. And it was, and then this wonderful lady came over and he, he had shared with Jimmy that he was an alcoholic and he just didn't have anything, anyone. And, you know, Jimmy's just pouring the love of Jesus into this man. And um, this woman comes up who kind of overheard and, and she said, I've been sober for 20 years and God set me free from alcoholism. And literally like a mini revival. And this man's name is now written in the Lamb's Book of Life because Jimmy took a step wow. and brought the marketplace or made the marketplace a miracle place. And it doesn't have to be in the office. It can be anywhere. So I just thought, and my daughter is in the vehicle, you know, praying and just interceding for what was going on. And there's a miracle. Just make it happen. Yeah. Just make it happen. Step mm -hmm. out. So we, sometimes we, we think that things have to happen within the four walls of the church. Yeah. And that's, that's not even in scripture. Most of the things that that Christ did when He was here on 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 Earth was was in was in the marketplace, and it wasn't behind the four walls mm -hmm. of, of the church. And I don't know. It's just it's just these mindsets. And and when it comes time for kingdom entrepreneurs, when it comes time for those business owners, I just think that we're hindered so many times, and and so many people have that poverty mindset, and that's something that I think it hinders so many people, whether it's past failures past mistakes. I think you hit a wall within your business because you don't think or don't feel that you can go any further because okay. of some of those things. And, and even though you've had a setback, I mean, you look at the Word of God. This is so powerful, guys. I think we miss it so many times because we don't, we don't do enough. We don't put enough trust mm -hmm. into the Word of God. I, I just... And, and I love the motivational spirit. I love the motivational spirit. I love the business atmosphere of, of some of these people that you sit under and and but i think there's something about the word of god and i think so many of us miss it there's power in the word of god yeah. there's wisdom in the word of god and i believe that that's what this ignite christian business really is all about we want to set people free we want to help people mm -hmm. get set free and it's because of it's because of the power of christ amen and once we get that kingdom mindset where we think outside of our own business, our own empires that we're building, and think of this bigger picture, kingdom. I think things are gonna happen. And here again, we're back to, we're back to why this whole thing started. Let's change our culture. Let's change our city, yeah. because I want our nation. And, well, and go ahead. One of the things I was just thinking about, so I think a lot of the issue with people I know it was with us, there's so much religion and yeah. and religion is what put Jesus on the cross and I believe 
He wants to set Christians free from a spirit of religion, from a spirit of, I have to go to church, I have to pray, I have to, you know, give, I have to fast. Yeah. Instead of, oh God, I love you so much, Jesus, you're my everything. And that if the Lord says, if you love me, you'll obey me. Mm. And it's funny because my son, and um, he used to say, you know, mom, you make the best sandwiches because you make them with love. Yeah. And it was how I would cut them. And, you know, you can just tell that it wasn't a drudgery. I got to make my, my son sandwiches because you see, I'd made five a day for him to go to He'd school. Eat a whole loaf. <laughs> no, it was kind of crazy. <laughs> but he always knew because he just loved how I cut the bread. It wasn't just the normal, it was the diagonal. Right, and so yeah. um, just something like that, how we just need to come to, from loving Jesus and serving him and that the religion is just stripped off of us because religion is always ugly. It's yeah. it's not of Jesus at all because he's a rewarder. He's a giver of life. Every good and perfect gift is from the Father. And anything that has to do with killing, stealing, destroying, anything ugly is from the enemy. And so I really feel like we need to just separate religion from relationship and everything needs to side on yeah. the yeah. side of relationship and growing relationship because... If I thought I had to cook my husband a meal, you know, just because he's he's not going to be pleased with me if I don't, that's that's not love. And so it's like I get to make dinners for him and and honor him in doing so. And um, I'm kind of laughing because he cooks a lot too. <laughs> so, but he, it's the same. I'm sure it's because he loves me. But right. one thing that just came to my mind about David. And, you know, he's one of the sons of Jesse. And he's out when, when Jesse was, Samuel was coming to Jesse's house to anoint one of his mm -hmm. sons, you know, as king. And how David is in the, you know, field with the flock of sheep. And I just thought, how interesting is it that he was not even, like from his point, point of view, he could have felt very neglected, very resented, like rejected. And instead... I, you know, I, I used to think that way, like, oh, poor David, like, that's awful. All the other seven sons are there in the house with their dad. And, you know, the man of God is coming in the house to anoint the next yeah. one as king. And I just, I started thinking about it. And I thought, you know, Jesus said, I only do and say what I see my father doing and saying. And that's when the miraculous would happen. And I thought, I believe David had a, such a heart for his father that he was even tending his sheep, and, and he probably knew about the meeting, was like, Dad, it's okay, you guys do that. And out of a place of humility of heart, he's like, I'll tend the sheep, I'll be here, I'm the youngest, it's, it's not me, and not expecting to be anointed as king. And instead, he's like, I'll just be about my father's business and taking care and tending the flock. And oh. I thought, how cool is that, mm -hmm. that when Samuel comes in, the prophet, and he's like going down and I'm sure just like, oh, this is the most likely one, tall, older, and going through the line. And the Lord said, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. And Jesse, do you have another son? Do you have any other sons? And he's like, yeah. And I thought it was so cool because Samuel said, we're not going to sit down until he comes in. And it's like, we cannot move forward in the kingdom until the king takes his place. Wow. Wow. And so good. That is so, so good. He, you know, David comes in and he's anointed as king. And it didn't mean that from that moment on things were easy. Mm. But it did mean that he was empowered. The oil, the Holy Spirit coming upon that man. He was able to slay giants and do what he had never done before. Wow. So Empowered. 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 I love mm -hmm. it. So that's what, guys, that's what Ignite is all about. Empowering people. Yeah. To go take your business to a whole new level. So if kingdom entrepreneurs, business owners, or just the kingdom-minded, just yeah. those kingdom-minded people. If you want to make a difference, this is what this show really is, is going to be all about. We're so excited because we do. We want, to, we want to bring some guest speakers on here that are going to impact your life, that are going to impact businesses. And, and really, guys, we're talking marketing people, top-notch marketing people we're going we're gonna to be bringing to this show. Things that are going to help move your mm -hmm. business forward. But guys, there's nothing like the Word of God. Amen. And that's what we need. That's what this whole thing is all about. It's about what you do today, making a difference for tomorrow. Guys, our prayer is that 
the Lord would fill you with a fresh fire, a fresh anointing like never before. And it overflows into your family and into, the, into your business and then into our cities and into our nation. To me, that's, what, that's, that's our heart. Yeah. And I want to make, I want to help create, make good leaders that are coming in. Let's make them great leaders because that's what this world is, is lacking today is leadership. Hey, we love you guys. Be blessed. And we're looking forward to Ignite Kingdom Talks next time.